it was handled badly, which I think most black people in the UK would agree with. And it was handled badly because um, of the way that the family was treated. Dorian and Neville, um, you had to go through things that they shouldn't have had to. It should have happened automatically. Um, and it's been 18 years, nearly 19 years. What do you think about it, the way it was handled? What do I think? I, I think it was handled badly, and I think it was unnecessary. The police, the role of police within that um, <laughs> was outrageous, their behaviour, and unlawful, illegal. And the question I have coming out of that, how badly it was handled, is what's happened to those officers that were actually involved in the case originally, because you know everybody today, black and white, would agree that the things that, that happened with that case, the way that it was handled, was wrong, illegal, just morally, from a moral point of view, as uh, any ordinary man or woman, any parent. Because today people look at Doreen, look at Neville and say, you know, they're so dignified and brave, and oh, this is 18 years later. Um, it was appalling, the way that the case was handled. Yes, I think that if, we, if we'd have had something such as the National African People's Parliament at that time, it would have made a huge difference to the handling of the case. Um, firstly, we would have had, there would have been a unified voice for um, black people in the UK, so therefore Doreen and Neville would have had a body to go to and say, this has happened, this is how we've been treated, it's not right, what are we going to do about it? Um, and in having uh, a body that was set up, not, not just to deal with when things necessarily go wrong, just by its existence, I think, um, the police, their attitude may have been different, the courts, you know, all the way through this case, so every point where um, people were dealing with um, the state and institutions, had there been a body in place, um, such as the National African People's Parliament, it would have been a different, a whole different ball game at the time. Yes, I'm aware of the, the National African People's Parliament and I actually involved with setting up the, as part of the, the interim um, National Organising Committee um, and my role within that is um, publicity, media and promotion, which is an important part of the setting up of this, of this new body for Africans in the UK. At the moment, in terms of raising awareness, um, getting people to talk about the issues that affect our communities in the UK um, and also uh, in educating people around certain issues, breaking things down in, in a form that people can readily um, understand and engage with. Um, I think for too long over this last 30 year period there's, there's been, it's not that nothing's been happening and it's not that people haven't been working towards um, unifying our, us as a community. Uh, thus far it hasn't worked. So I, I believe there has to be a different approach, that we have to be open and honest with one another. And a part of that is, is about you know, raising, raising the awareness, giving a space for the issues to be discussed. But most importantly, actually doing it. <laughs> actually um, coming together and saying, you know, we as Africans in the UK um, believe that we've been discriminated against, that in every sphere of, of life um, that we come to come at the bottom of the pile, we have to re reverse that. And it's not about taking the begging bowl, it's about us being proactive um, in taking that programme forward. So as, as part of my role um, in setting up the National African People's Parliament, I view it as very important. Um, there are a number of individuals involved and it's not going to take, take one person or one um, group of people. It's going to take the community, communities across the UK to come together, unify and do what we need to do. Uh, 
I think the benefits that we could could make for environment through bodies such as the National African People's Parliament um, are around things like education, employment, um, you know, the health service, any um, in any sphere of life where again that is institutionalised because that that is where we fare worst. Um, so I think I believe that in all those areas that we can benefit and bring benefits. I think the message that the setting up of a National African People's Parliament um, sends is that we're unified as a people, and that's the, the main, um, or one of the main aims of um, a National African People's Parliament, having a unifying body for Africans in the UK. And the message that sends is um, that we're not going to basically put up with um, what, what's gone on from the, the moment that our, well certainly my parents, set foot in this country um, and in all the areas that I've, I've spoken about in terms of education, employment and so on. Um, and that we would be more likely to be taken seriously when um, crisis issues arise and are going to be listened to as a unified body of people within the UK. The main one for me would be education. Um, we have at the moment you know, record numbers of exclusions um, of our children, mainly our young black boys, our young men, um, but not exclusively our, our girls as well. And they are our future, so automatically for me education has to be at the top um, of those priorities. There aren't any names that you know come to mind immediately. Um, I know who I wouldn't at this point um, like to see. We've, we have a number of black um, you know, African MPs in Parliament at the moment, um, men and women, and you know I've heard a number of those MPs say that they've been elected and they represent their constituency. They don't particularly, they're not there for black people or they're not just there for black people. Um, I think given that many of them got there on the vote, back of the votes and support and rallying around of, of black people, that it's a slap in the face <laughs> for us as a community. Um, so for them to turn around and, and say that, it's is not acceptable. Um, for me. I, I'm not saying that as an MP in the UK Parliament you shouldn't represent your constituent. But if your constituency is predominantly black, then you need to address the issues that affect us as black people with, within the UK. Um, so it's not good enough to say that you know I've been elected for all my constituents, not just black people. My role um, within the Interim National Organising Committee is um, around publicity and media. Um, how I actually originally got involved was um, a year ago in at the Albany Theatre there was a commemoration of the, the New Cross fire, which I remember vividly at the time I just had my first child, who was not even a year old yet. I was living in the Midlands still. Um, I was jobless, <laughs> homeless at the time. Um, and I had had some friends who actually came to London after the, the um, initial shock, my horror at hearing about what had happened. And we all said at the time that, you know, that could have been any one of us, that, you know. Um, and actually taking that in, that these people were serious in terms of, I lived in an area that was in, in Birmingham, the National Front. I mean, that was, he ran the gauntlet every day. Um, so it was real to me in terms of 
uh, young people being killed you know, in this house party. Friends of mine actually came to London and took part in the National Black People's Day of Action. I wasn't able to, to come, but you know, was, in, was in contact with people and heard what was going on and so on. And felt good at, at that time that we were able as a people to come together in that way. Um, so, you know, 30 years, time has passed. And it was something of a shock when I heard about that event um, in, in January 2010. I was kind of stunned that it was 30 years and that, well, you know, what have we been doing? What, you know, I have, I have a grandchild now. What, is this going to continue? Are we, what are we going to do about this? Um, and in essence, that, you know, felt that nothing had changed. And this was in talk, you know, conversations I had with various people at the time. We, we attended the event which was very moving. Um, a number of people spoke, there were a number of performances. Um, and I think, this is why I say it's an idea whose time has come, because I think there were a number of people that, that were there, who happened to be there, who had those same conversations and said, look, you know, we need to, to come together, we need to do something in terms of, this is 30 years comm commemoration of this terrible, terrible event. Um, and it's good that we're commemorating it, but how are we going to move on from this? So it was from there that I, I attended a meeting, and then when you know people were asked, would you like to get involved, and raised my hand and said yes, definitely. Um, and I feel that I have a, a part to play, I have something to contribute. So hence my involvement. Um, and I would encourage others. Um, especially our young people to get involved, find out what's going on, what the Parliament's about, and how you can contribute to um, the National African People's Parliament.